go. Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Keith Morrison. I am the manager consulting for Africa, also the local product expert because, yes. Um, thank you very much for going and signing up for, and for attending these uh, over the next 10 uh, well, ten working days. I am going to try my best to go and work through um, work through Ivan, tell you how everything, uh, tell you where everything goes, how it works, uh, hints, tips, tricks, and all the rest of it. And we're going to go and try and cover as much as we can uh, and exactly how best to go do things. Now, some of you guys are old hands. Some of you guys are new. But it's still very nice to go have you all along. And, uh, yeah, um, I am hoping, uh, it looks like we've still got more people signing in all the time. Um, first off, uh, uh, if there are any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, and that's just either put your hand up or go and put the, uh, or go type a question into the questions box. I will try and answer it as soon as possible. Um, that might not be the, it might not always be possible that I get to it immediately, but I will try and do it, do it as soon as possible so that uh, you can go get your answers you need. Um, first off, can everybody actually see my screen? Because there's nothing worse than me talking to a dead mic. Uh, just put up your hand or type in the questions and that'll just let me know. Uh, let's have a look. Do we have? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, okay. Nice. To, uh, yeah. Okay. Cool, guys. Okay. So you can see my screen. Yep. Oh, I'm getting it from everyone. Cool. That's awesome. So, all right. Uh, yeah. So I'm just going to go put down all the hands and we can go and continue on. <laughs> yeah, you guys have covered it really, really well. Okay. So now... Guys, thank you very much. Welcome. Let's get a start on this. Uh, as you have probably gone and received, this is the general training plan of what we're following. So it's an hour and a half today. We're going to start with introduction, overview, and architecture, uh, setup, and I'm actually going to run through an installation on my machine for iVent. Um, yeah, so we'll try and go through and show you exactly where all the little checkboxes are and all the other bits and pieces so you guys know exactly what to look at. Um, uh, we'll also do uh, also have a look at some of the enterprise uh, setup and con and uh, enterprise setup retail profiles all the rest of it so you just get a basic idea of what we're looking at what we're starting with um, okay all right uh, are there any other questions uh, okay all right no that's all that's all been there okay all right so and I can see the uh, people are coming in all the time this is good so all right, guys. Uh, just up, uh, just um, show of hands. Uh, how many of you have seen Ivan before? Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yes. 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 Okay. So a fair. Yep. Oh, it, it's all going, and it's uh, yeah. Okay. So the fair number of you guys have seen Ivan before. So I don't have to go and explain that Ivan is a retail system um, that has been created by City Access. Um, let me just go get this thing started so we can all go see the same thing there we go okay cool so we've got that thank you very much guys okay so we're all all in good standing over there so let's get a start on this like I said introduction overview these set of slides are available on the city access knowledge portal if anyone doesn't know what the city access knowledge portal is well I don't know how you when you manage to sign up for this if you did if you don't but if you don't please go sign up it's got the forums, it's got everything. You will go and meet each other on there quite profusely. I know of several of the commentators who are on there, and uh, most of them are actually from Africa. A lot of people are from Africa, which means that you will be able to go and talk to other people experiencing similar problems that you are having in a local time zone. Yes, right. City Access Support does do 24-7, but at the same time speaking in a local time zone, just it uh, also helps with understanding. I find a lot of my support calls are, uh, I don't quite know what he said, or how does this work, or, you know, or we're not quite understanding each other. Um, so being able to speak on the forums is a great, great thing for that. So now this, uh, uh, this set of training slides that I got over here is a set of training slides for a five-day session. Um, don't worry, it's, this is not a five-day session. Like I said, it is a 10-day session. Um, we are just, I'm just going to quickly end it. You guys should have gotten a basic trading plan or been able to view it. This is something that I put together. Um, and I, this is what I'm going by and we're going to go 
and try and cover all of it. All of it culminating next week, Friday. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there will be a test. Right, the great advantage of you going and writing the test with me is that uh, I will actually go and, um, uh, is that I will actually be here. I will, we will do it as a WebEx. I will be here to go answer questions f about the test. So if you get a weird question in the test, I will be able to go say the answer is X. Or, and even better, is that uh, I will be able to go and review your uh, tests with you. I've got access to the test system. I can go through and go say, right, Alex, you wrote it like this. Or, Alex, you missed this question. Come on, man, I told you this. These kind of things. So next week, uh, next week Friday, we're writing the test. So on that note, right, back to, uh, back to death by PowerPoint at least for the beginning. Now, I've been on the cloud. This is, okay, my version of these slides is slightly old, but uh, right, we can be deployed on the cloud. We do have cloud deployment technology. I have a question. Let's have a look over here. Uh, question, uh, it's really blurred, okay. Uh, sorry, Agu, uh, it's, that's just your internet speed that is doing that. I uh, can't really go and help on that note. Um, all right, so I've been on the cloud. We do have the technology. You can deploy it out there. We will, if you have your own clouds, I know some of you do. We are more than happy to go give you the infrastructure, uh, how to do it. I know some of your part, some of your customers who you are implementing have their own clouds. I personally have gone and implemented iVend in places such as AWS, that's Amazon Web Services, as well as also on uh, some of the Vodafone services, as well as also in a couple of other cloud-based situations. It's there, it does work, it does mean that you do need to keep an eye out on some things such as your port setups, but it does work and you can go in, as well as also how your virtual machines are set up. But, yeah. Anyway, I'm not gonna be covering so much the cloud on this one because nine times out of 10, in fact, it's very rare that I've had to do a cloud setup. Most of the time it's on-premise and that's where we're going with it. So, enterprise, you get on the cloud. I've in pause. That's what we're going to be installing today. I've in mobile pause. Uh, that I will be covering in one of the later sessions. Android and Apple is uh, what we run on. So you've got options over there. I've in e-commerce. Uh, e-commerce in a box. That's also, that is also another separate session, set of sessions we will be running. I've in loyalty is included in these set of sessions. So you will see that here. Uh, I've in mobile pause is included in the sessions as well. And I've in passes. I've in passes. Very, very interesting. I'm seeing a lot of pickup of them, particularly out here in South Africa. And finally, I've in analytics because you need, need analytics. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, Alex. Uh, okay. I'm just going to put your hand down. Unless there are any other questions. Uh, yeah. If there are any questions, put them in the questions. Uh, put them in the questions box. Okay, cool. All right, I will also, there will also be a question and answer session at the end of this as well. So, moving on. Now, this is the slide. I'm going to come back to the slide again and again and again and again because this is my favorite slide because it explains everything in a wonderfully, wonderfully detailed and simple way. Okay, we have a question over here. Can you get the uh, recording of the session afterwards? Yes, these recording, uh, thank you, Alex. These session recordings will be posted online, you will be able to go back and have a look at them. If you miss a day, you will be able to go back and review it and carry on. So, and uh, yeah, you will be able to use these to help you to write the test as well. Okay, all right. So, like I said, this is my favorite slide because it explains everything. Now, the first thing you have to realize about the slide is that it is not the be all and end all of iVent. It's just a relatively good, uh, it's a relatively good layout. It goes and it explains things nicely. But at the same time, there are changes that you can do in it to go and change exactly how the customer wants to be uh, set up. Let's go through it on the standard layout first, and I'll explain, and as we go through, I'll explain some of the different things you can do. First off, at the bottom over here, we have the ERP application. For you Sage guys, you're looking at X3, 300, Sage 1, uh, Partner, uh, well, uh, Partner, Evolution, those are the, are the ones we're looking at at the moment. Depends on what, and also depends on the deals you bring in. You bring us a deal, we'll see what we can do for that. Uh, as well as you're also looking down here at NAV, 
uh, Microsoft Dynamics Nav, as well as SAP and uh, uh, SAP Business One and SAP ECC Six, all flavors and variants of it, which is also nice and interesting. There are other integrations coming, uh, which, as far as you guys should should be concerned, will make you should, uh, make you very happy because we're trying to go make it so that uh, we can just plug and unplug these things in as quickly as possible. So from the ERP over here, we connect across uh, to the actual Ivan Enterprise server, and we do this via APIs. So everyone knows what APIs are, Application Program Interfaces, and these are our own set of APIs. This is not like we have a super uh, quadruple, dodecatupled secret uh, API that we use to go integrate across the stuff. The APIs we get, the APIs you get. It means that you don't need, it's the same stuff that's listed on the CKP. We use it to integrate across and, and to go run over here for our stores and for our manager stations and POS. Same stuff that you get over there. So if you encounter an error, yes. Please, we want to know about it because more than likely, we'll also need to go fix it. Or we'll have a solution. Right. And because of that, it also means that we are near real time. So... Our APIs are all web services. They go and they run as quick as you can. And the reason, and once again, near real time, I know the uh, I know this is something that the sales guys get wrong. They say it's real time. It's near real time. The only reason we say it's near real time is that it does take a few seconds to translate from POS all the way up through to over here, but that's pretty quick. There is a waiting on, and when I say waiting, it means that we go and revalue uh, certain types of information more than others. So, for instance, sales go and get priority moving through the system here, whereas, for instance, ooh, master data changes, price changes, kit, uh, kit, um, kit setups, uh, customer setups, those things do take a bit longer to go through um, because those are obviously not valued as highly as, say, sales. All right. From going and connect, uh, connecting across on, on the LAN, we go across to our Ivan Enterprise server. So, because I'm speaking to a technologically minded crowd, I'm going to go and try and keep this as straightforward as possible and also remember all these technological things. First off, we are built in Microsoft in the, uh, on the .NET, uh, .NET platform. So, that is, we are built in C Sharp as well as if you are trying to go build any add-ons for us, we, that is VB.NET. So you can go, uh, so that's what we use. It's all standard. We don't look at some of these weird fu funky classes, calls, custom, uh, custom setups and all the rest of it. We try and keep it as standard as possible. So for instance, when Microsoft brought out, say, ooh, SQL 2016, we went and were able to upgrade and to use 2016 within a version. So quite literally, they brought it out, next version we supported it, which was actually quicker than a lot of our ERP customers. So, right, that's why we go, and uh, the reason I mentioned 2016 specifically is that's where they went and they mucked around and changed some of the way that things work, which, yeah, go figure. Anyway, we try to keep on the bleeding edge of stuff. It does also mean that we sometimes do get caught up, but, well, yeah, we try and fix it as soon as possible as well. Okay, so Ivan Enterprise Server over here, as you probably guessed, goes and runs on MS SQL. Right, we support all the way back to 2008 R2, um, so pretty far back, uh, and all the way up to 2016, like I said. Um, it does give you quite a bit of variety of what to use. However, please be aware, and guys, I cannot state this enough, is it is a very specific collation. Okay, now, for... Uh, for a lot of you guys, you should be using the collation, uh, I think it's Latin 1 General uh, CP1 CIAS. Right, it is listed in the in the iVent Hardware and Software Guide. You will actually see it over there. I'll bring it up in a minute. You can see it. I have a question. Agu, if you can just write your question, please, and uh, write your question in the questions box, and I will go and uh, get to it. All right, cool. Um, okay, let's just go over here, uh, and, yeah, sorry guys, uh, okay, all right, and, uh, yes, good question, thank you very much, Agu, is, it runs on MS SQL only, we do not do Oracle, or any of the other funky database types out there, 
um, where specifically uh, MS SQL works pretty well. It's also part of the idea of um, us just trying to go and uh, just trying to go standardize stuff. MS SQL is used worldwide. Pretty much every single, um, uh, pretty much every single one of uh, the ERPs that we integrate into or accounting systems use MS SQL. The exceptions being things like, for instance, Sage One, um, which, or well, and also the Pastels. I do, not, I, I haven't forgotten Pervasive guys, um, but most of the rest of them go and use MS SQL. It does mean that you can go piggyback off the licenses for that. Um, which is also something of a, something that's quite nice to just save a bit of money on. Um, it does also mean that, uh, and I know I've got it split out over here as having a separate Ivan Enterprise server. Typically, if you're following your traditional rules of networking, you should have different servers for everything. So one, uh, so one server for a uh, one SQL server, one box for a SQL server, one box for your ERP, and one box for your uh, for Ivan. Um, I know that's not always possible. I know that's not the way companies run. I know that, for instance, you can have SQL and your ERP and your enterprise server all on one box. That's fine, right? Um, I also know that, in that, for instance, there are some uh, specific uh, setups that are slightly different. Uh, Sage X3, I do know that you do, um, that there is something slightly different about the way things get set up there, but that's something that will be, that should be covered in the Sage X3 setup. I'm not going to go through that now. Uh, this is for generic event. Okay. So, over here, Enterprise Server, this is your center point of where you control everything from. This is your, uh, this is where you go and you set up, for instance, which stores you have, uh, which, uh, how they react, your different, uh, your different layouts. If you've got different layouts for your point of sale, you can go set that all up over here. Pricing, promote, uh, promotions, marketing material, all the rest of that, that is done through your central server over here. Um, and then from here, we go through the lovely cloud of internet. Dun, 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 where things happen. Across to the Ivan store server. Now, oh, sorry, we've skipped ahead. Now, the actual, before, uh, well, you know, I'll come back to the internet in a second, but I just want to go across and explain the actual store server. Um, the store server over here, we are not talking about a full-on store server box, you know, uh, sort of something that sits in a rack and has to be maintained by an IT guy coming around with swap outs of hard drives and all the rest of it. This is a store server app. It's designed so that it, it, it it can run on MS SQL, uh, SQL Express. So you're not looking at uh, you're not looking at a particularly hefty setup over here. The um, the well the idea is is that at least up until you get say four point of sale, and that's uh, this is something uh, it's it's not an exact science uh, because there are some places where they've got many points of sale, but they only do a very slow sales rate. Where there are other places, for instance, your local supermarket. It goes and, sorry, your local supermarket will go and have, say, 10 or 20 lanes. And at their peak times, they're processing, uh, they're processing, uh, processing thousands of sales an hour, which in turn means that you need to go, you will need to have something a bit beefier at the store server. It's something that as a consultant, you're going to need to learn to go judge. It doesn't mean you need, uh, it means that for most of the time, you will be able to get away with the SQL Express. Uh, set up at the store server, the second you get a bit bigger, you will need to go get a full-on SQL installation there. And the reason that we have the SQL over here is because if this wonderful little cloud of internet goes down, Africa strikes. For This is something that happens, it's universal. I've been from top to bottom of Africa and everyone asked me the same question, what happens when the internet goes out? Well, let me tell you, when the internet goes out, you can still carry on processing at the store server. In fact, if you have a, in fact, depending on where the internet is out, either at the enterprise or on the store side, uh, if it's if you still have internet access at the store, but the enterprise doesn't have it, the store will still be able to carry on and do credit card, um, uh, to still be able to do credit card transactions. However, if the if the break is over here at the store, 
the uh, uh, then you will not be able to do credit card transactions over here, primarily because the credit card software will not validate. Um, that's something that the credit card software uh, generally handles. We communicate. You have to understand is that from us, we communicate to the to the actual credit card installations. The installation then communicates back to the bank and all the rest of it, and that is all internet based. Can't get around that. It's uh, there is no way that you could go set up IVN, for instance, to go and take and store credit card details to be run at a later date. That doesn't happen. Um, it's uh, that's not what we do. Um, the uh, uh, the other thing to consider about the internet is that we are entirely PCI certified. Now, PCI uh, PCI certified is not something that a lot of people go and worry about out here in Africa, but it is something that is becoming more and more and more prevalent. Particularly, like I see just the other day, Uber has now been hacked, for instance, uh, and they're following the long, 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 long list of companies that have been hacked, including famous names such as Dropbox, Google, well, Google hasn't, they're an exception, uh, such as Dropbox, LinkedIn, uh, Ashley Madison, Sony, uh, you know, and these are big companies, guys, that are meant to have these things nice, uh, your credit card details nice and safely stored, and they don't. Somebody got in, somebody made, uh, somebody's made off with them, and now you've got to be worried about it. We, on the other hand, are PCI certified. What does PCI stand for? It's Payment Card Industries, and then the actual certification is DSS, which is Digital Security Standard. We are up to the latest level. We are uh, secure. Things are encrypted between the enterprise server and the store server. You don't need to worry about that. That includes things like salting, hashing, all those wonderful things that go on in the crypto world to go and get, uh, to go make sure that people can't actually go and get in and, uh, well, they can't actually go and get in and make off with your credit card details. So that's already in place over here. Now, the other thing I will say about the internet is that when we are connecting from Enterprise server to store server, we usually go over a public IP address. That's the, that's reckon, well, public IP address is one way. The other way you can do it is via VPN. Um, to be honest, VPN I do recommend because it is just that extra level of security. The VPNs these days are pretty good. You don't need to go worry about going and having uh, people going and, uh, and cracking it. I have another question. Uh, what did I say PCI is? Okay, Agu, PCI is Payment Card Industries. Okay, if you search for it, just go Google it online. You'll see it goes, it's, if you go Google PCI certification. Otherwise, you'll get the PCI bus, which is the old standard that you used to have on, uh, on your uh, motherboards to go and insert your cards into for your PC. No, we're looking at PCI, uh, PCI security. So, um, all right, sorry guys, just back over here. Uh, yes, so VPNs, I do recommend it. It just makes it that extra bit secure. They're pretty quick these days. Uh, speaking of speed, line speed that we're talking about over here, we do go down to one megasecond, right, which is about as low as you'd really want to go. Let's be honest, these days, your line speeds are not as great a concern as they used to be. They are actually reasonably cheap. So it's, uh, it is something that you can set up over here. We also do not use large packets because obviously as web services, we don't want a lot of data moving backwards and forwards. We want it moving backwards and forwards as quickly as possible. Uh, Alex, if you can just type your question, I will answer it and uh, we can go from there. Okay, so that's, uh, that's over there. Um, once again, a lot of this stuff is covered in our hardware and software guide, but uh, it is something just to go and have a quick look at. Okay, the speed, uh, Alex, you ask, uh, you're asking about the speed is one megasecond. So that is as, uh, one megasecond, as soon as you got that for bandwidth, you should be fine. Okay, all right, so, and that's on the internet side. Please be aware of it. Um, and once again, guys, the idea is with this is that um, iVend is meant to be an online system. I know in some places they go, they say, oh, no, but we can be offline for days. Right there. Yes, the entire idea is that you're not offline for days. You're meant to be offline for hours. Right. The, I have had questions about can we go and do an extract from the enterprise and then reload it at the store server if it's offline for too long. No, 
uh, can we go and do extracts from the store server and reload them into the enterprise? No. Right. Online, guys, as soon as you go and you activate it and it updates, it will update through pretty quickly. It doesn't use, it doesn't actually eat a lot of, uh, a lot of bandwidth when you're using it. It's just, please go and, um, uh, please go use that. Okay, so in Kiru, I have a question from you. When the store server is down, at, when internet is down at store server, uh, can it be done at the store? Uh, no. Okay, right there. So when, in, when the internet is down at the store server but up at the enterprise, credit card transactions cannot be done at the store. Uh, that's very simple, is uh, a very simple reason. Credit cards need to transact on the internet. Full stop. I think we covered that a bit earlier. Um, okay, so yeah. Uh, anyway, moving on, and that was that. I think goes and covers most of it that we're looking at over here. Uh, over here in the actual store, like I said, it's just a store server app. It's not a full on you know, full on dark box that you need to get somebody to look at. At the same time, you can also have a store server, an Ivin Pos, and a store management station all loaded on one machine. There is not nothing stopping you from doing that. Um, at having it on separate machines, also equally wonderful. You can do that as well, not a problem. Um, the same thing over here is, uh, uh, the same thing over here is, yeah, like I said, SQL Express, use your, and use your judgment on how to handle that. Um, over here, the actual, and I've done it again. There we go, sorry. Uh, there we go, over here at the actual Ivan pause. Um, this once again, and what I recommend is for the actual POS, for the actual POS machines, please go and install uh, both the POS and the management console on it. Very simple reason is the point of sale is uh, the point of sale device is a licensed component. Um, that is, and it's licensed per device. The manager station or management console is a license. It can be licensed per device or per user all right so and that's uh, that's something that you can set over here that does mean that you can have that once if you've got all of them on the same machine it makes it much easier to go and adjust and change stuff instead of somebody having to go run back try and find another machine oh no wait no wait now i've got to log on to this no okay i changed it over there okay can you please just check if it's printing che no wait check no it's no. Uh -oh. you end up in a broken telephone situation Please don't do it. Rather just go and have the management console go and load it onto here. There's nothing wrong with it. You can load up the management console as many times so long as you've gone and you've assigned a user with the license. Um, and that just goes and makes it much easier. Now, okay, the pause over here, that's your standard point of sale. You're doing your, uh, you go and you do your sales through it, your returns, your refunds. We will go through exactly what transactions. I think that's in like... Uh, episode three of the saga that is uh, that is going to be this week and uh, next. Um, I might be mistaken on that, but we will see what the story is. So that is uh, that is something we will we will go through and that includes transactions such as lay buys, which is uh, which seems to be a standard out here in Africa. Africa seems to love these things. Lay buys is the is the way forward. Um, from there, we will uh, we'll go see how that works. Gift cards, gift uh, gift cards issuing, redeeming, uh, as well as also things like fulfillment. So your deliveries for your for your ERP guys, fulfillment is uh, uh, fulfillment is your delivery side over here. And uh, just speaking of that, guys, please remember when you are dealing with retail, retail is not ERP. Um, there are different terms. There are. Um, I will try and highlight them as we come across them. Um, for instance, it's forecasting, not MRP. And a lot of guys in retail will look down on you if you go and you say it's MRP, and you'll say it does exactly the same thing. It does. I, I honestly, I, I will tell you right now, it does exactly precisely the same thing. But they call it for, they call it forecasting, not MRP. So. Like I said over here, go and load up your management console and your pause at the same one. Your pause, uh, and as well, like I said, uh, you do all of your pause transactions through here. You can go and have teams of people. We will come into the into the concept of teams a bit later. So you can have one point of sale and have multiple uh, people coming and joining in and working on it. You can also go and have um, 
uh, one point of sale per, assigned to a person. You can also have it assigned that that person is assigned only to that point of sale or they can go and pick whichever point of sale they want to work at. These all setups in the system, we will be going through this. Um, next one up, we have the IVN store manager station. The store manager station over here is where you control your, uh, you, can, you do all your back office management. So you're looking at things like your end of day function, your finalization of your end of day, your actual um, checking out transactions, your count ups, your stock, your inventory control, your stock transfers between places, uh, initiating stock transfers, receiving stock, uh, goods receipt, purchase orders, all the, uh, those sort of things can be initiated from the man store manager station as well as we can go and set it up, uh, you can go set it up as who has got exact what rights to what. Um, you can, and like I said, you can assign the license either to users or to machines. Uh, to point on, speaking on the licenses part, the store server is a license, okay? The POS is a license, and the POS license can be used either for the, uh, for the Windows POS or the mobile POS. That's fine. You can move from one to the other. Uh, the store manager station is a license. So those are the licenses that we have uh, set up at the moment. All right. So from, uh, from here, I just want to go to the uh, mobile pause. And I must learn not, not to go click on the screen. Um, the mobile pause over here is, uh, runs on either Apple or Android. And that is something that a lot of our competitors do not do. Um, a lot of the times I see they will do Apple or Android. Or they go, or you go and you ask them, do you have a mobile point of sale? And they'll say, yes. You load it, on, uh, you load it up onto a Windows tablet, which is 20,000 Rand a pop. Or you, uh, do you have mobile pods? Yes. You load it up onto, onto an iPad, which is 30,000 Rand a pop. Congratulations for blowing the budget then. Whereas with us, we can load it up onto an Android tablet, which if I had a look at the Cyber, uh, Cyber Monday deals they're having out here, I think I saw a quite nice uh, Mesa 10-inch tablet going for, uh, let me see, I think it was 1,000 Rand. So, yeah, and that's on take a lot, I think, if they've still got stock. Anyway, um, that over there is that over there is something that gets set up for your mobile tab. Uh, just a note on your iOS and your uh, and your Android is we support all the way back to Android four and all the way up to the latest Android eight. For iOS, I believe we support all the way back to iOS six. Right there, I could be mistaken on that. Once again, check your hardware and software guides for. Uh, for your region to go see exactly what's going on there. But that is all available over there. There is a small database that runs on your mobile pause, right? It's called SQLite. The, it's pretty good. It's, uh, I found out the other day that it's SQLite databases are the same databases the US uses for its missile targeting systems. So it's pretty much bulletproof. Yeah, go figure. Um, the SQL, uh, as having said that, it's a small database, it gets initialized, and the Ivin mobile pause is one of the few places where we do batch transactions, and the reason we do that is that if you are out on the road, like we have this one mobile pause over here, you will go and have instances where you need to go and where you don't and really want to go load up everything immediately. You can set it so that it will go and synchronize pretty much instantaneously. If you're online, if you're offline, you can go say, I want it to synchronize every 30 minutes hour, however long it might be, you can go set that up over there in the mobile pause setup. Once again, to be covered later this week or next. Mobile pause out here on the road, you can do that as well. Guys, this is not a sales, uh, this is not for salesmen. Um, that, uh, hang on, and we have a question before I dive into this one. Uh, can I use the store server as the same, uh, yes, yeah, Agu, we covered that a bit earlier. Yes, you can. Um, all right, the, uh, uh, as I was saying over here, the mobile pause, this is not for your, uh, not for your salespeople out on the road. Um, I've had a lot of, I've had queries about that. Uh, the thing is that if you've got salespeople out on the road, generally you actually want more of a CRM system. We're not a CRM system. We are a retail management system, not just a pause. 
not just a, and when I say POS, I don't mean just mean point of sale. It's also point of service because you've got to keep up on these acronyms these days. But we cover all, we cover all of them. So nine times out of ten, if there's an acronym, uh, yeah, we probably thought of it and covered it uh, before the before anyone else did or thought to cover it. Anyway, so that's all. That's all over there. Your, uh, like I said, not really for not really for go for use of out on the road. Though the idea with this is is that you can have a person uh, going out to these farmers markets, these country stalls, uh, pop up shops, all the rest of them. Uh, seems to be the big thing in retail these days. You have a pop up shop, or you have a, uh, or you have a kiosk, or you have a stall, or a, wherever it is. You know, you want to, you want a, a device out there for a day or two, where you can go put stock in that location for that device, and then it will come through. Uh, in Kiru, I've got a question from you. How do you activate the demo stack on a mobile? So you can demo to a prospect, and Kira will come to that. Uh, uh, good question. Um, we'll come to that later when we go and we do the uh, mobile pause setup. Uh, we'll go, actually go through the setup and how to link it through to iVent. Okay, uh, over here, use for pop-up stores. Like I said, we've got uh, quite a number of those being used. At the same time, you can also go and use these for deliveries. So your mobile points of sales can be used for deliveries. Uh, they actually integrate through to Google Maps or Apple Maps, depending on your device. You can it will go tell you the direction you need to take. Once you get there, you can then go and um, uh, once you get there, you can then go and receive the rest of the money that's owing, as well as also take the customer's signature. The signature is then digitally recorded from the device all the way back into the enterprise server, where it can be viewed at a later date. Uh, moving on from that, I've had e-commerce. Uh, fully uh, fully functional uh, e-commerce. Think of Amazon or take a, or take a lot on a box. We are pretty much that flexible, right? We do reselling. We do uh, click to collect. We go, which is one of the ones that was bigger year, uh, that everyone seemed to be asking a year or two ago. But we do it, um, and we did it before anyone asked. Uh, you can completely customize the front end. You can change it to look how you want. You can embed YouTube videos. Uh, integrates to half a dozen, well, no, not half a dozen, right there, a gross, there we go, uh, for those of you who remember your numbers, a gross of in, of the different uh, types of, uh, of uh, social networks out there, so everything from Facebook, Twitter, you, uh, Twitter, YouTube, all the rest of it, it does all of it, wedding registers, uh, timers, newsletters, polls, yeah, only thing I don't think it has is forums built into it, but I'm pretty sure there's forum software we could do that for. So that's all out there. That's another training session altogether because it is just that big. I've in passes. This is becoming quite big. I'm seeing these. I'm I'm starting to see a lot of traction, particularly out here in South Africa, for some of these things for you South African guys. Uh, Discovery seems to be uh, ca uh, catching on and using these. Kawaii seems to be going and looking at these as well. These are quite nice and, and uh, are important. In Europe and the US, they are really starting to take off because you can do things like geolocate them. Uh, so this is something that you can then go and uh, if somebody walks past a store, it will go and ping you and go say, hey, ta-da, this is your uh, congratulations, you know, come in and spend your uh, hard-earned gift certificate with us. And we've got statistics going and showing that 90%, 90, yeah, I think it's about 95% of gift certificates are never used. Right. But of the 5% of gift certificates that are used, 95% uh, of those, uh, people never spend just the gift certificate. It's always the gift certificate and something else. So there is something else to go and consider. But Ivan Passes handles that. Like I said, geolocated, all the rest of it. And so long as the phone's location services are turned on, you're fine for that. Um, the uh, the other nice thing about it is you can also dial in these uh, the Ivan passes over here use either the Apple Wallet, so they are automatically built into every Apple device out there, uh, or they go and use the Ivan Wallet or a suitable app on Android. It was actually weird. I ended up going and downloading my flight tickets into my Ivan passes app because that's it's a universal format. Go figure. Makes it easy. Ivan Analytics. Uh, okay, and just before I dive too much further in, just on the licenses side, I do want to point out uh, Ivan e-commerce is a separate license component. Uh, Ivan passes is a separate license component. 
consult with your salesperson to go find out exactly how that works. Uh, next one up, I've in analytics. Uh, and the reason I've got analytics hanging on the outside over here, not sitting inside the enterprise server, is because this over here, Ivan Analytics, is where we can either go integrate through to something like, for instance, ClickView, which used to be all the rage until they priced themselves out of the market, or um, we do actually have an online portal for that you can deploy uh, on your system. This is, uh, it's, not, it's not a portal we go and we control, it's we give you the software, you control it, you'll actually see it as part of the installation that I'm, uh, I'm going to do just now and that we probably are going to need to go hurry up with because otherwise we're going to run out of time. But um, you're going to see that a bit later. We will go and uh, when, we ins when we install it, it's one of the options, you install it and you can go view your reports through a web browser, which is cool. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's over there. And uh, to actually go and do your report viewer, that is a licensed component. Uh, okay. Finally, the enterprise server is not a licensed component. Yeah, I said it, it's not a licensed component. Uh, the enterprise server is free, yay. The, uh, over here, the, uh, however, the integration to whatever system you're looking at is probably not free, unless you write it and then give it away for free. In fact, pretty much every integration I know is paid. So yeah, that is something to consider. And that doesn't, uh, that doesn't include things such, uh, uh, I've tried to go highlight as many of those as I can, but there are obviously other things and I'll try and highlight those as we come across them. I have a question and the question is, is a separate license required for analytics? Uh, yes, yeah, I, yeah, we just covered that. So I'm guessing that's a bit old. Uh, will there be a recording of this? Uh, yes. Yes, Frederick, there will be a recording of this. Yeah, we, you must be late to the party. We did cover that a bit earlier. Okay, all right. So now I've actually gone and I've covered Ivend and all of its lovely little things. Uh, in fact, the only thing I haven't covered in here is loyalty. Now, the entire idea with Ivend is we are an omni-channel omni platform. And this is one of the buzzwords that you go and you hear in life around retail. Omni-channel means that we go and we cover everything from going and receiving stock in to selling it out the front, as well as going and receiving customer information and keeping that and hooking them in so they will forever come back and buy, 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 buy from you. So uh, loyalty is built in throughout the entire system. We are going to go and spend some time on it because it is a, it is a beast. You can actually go and sell our loyalty module as a separate system. Um, yeah, it's that powerful. So if you want to integrate it to anything else, and I have had calls for that, feel free. We can do it. People can go and uh, then deploy it exactly how they want it, where they want it, and with what they want it. So that's over there. All right. Now, I've gone and I've covered everything over here. But because we are on, well, more or less on time, I'm now actually going to go start the installation of our uh, of iVent and one of the screens that I do want to go and cover over here is the installation components um, so let's go through and we can get a start on exactly how this works first off step one uh, download your iVent uh, download iVent and I just have one more question um, Oh, uh, I see I have a question from Frederick again. Uh, you will be able to access the recorded question through the, the recorded session through the City Access Knowledge Portal. That will be available online. Uh, go and have a look on, if you have not been to the City Access Knowledge Portal and logged in, I don't quite know how you got the meeting, to, uh, the connection to here, but uh, I would suggest you go do it um, and you will be able to get access to this. So. All right, so we're going to go start over here with the Ivind, uh, uh, Ivind POS 6.5 setup. Okay, please don't go too fast. Okay, I will try and keep it slow, Agu. Right there. Uh, and then, okay, uh, here's a good one from Eric. Uh, a yeah, good question from Eric. Are the IVN versions dependent on ERP versions? E.g. IVN 6.5, update 5, needs SAP B1, 6.2, PL8, etc. Uh, yes, there are versions that are uh, for, uh, there are versions for your ERP. Um, however, particularly on the SAP side, I think we support all the way back to PL3, 
no, PL2, if I remember correctly, though with SAP, and I have been a SAP consultant, so I do know this, obviously no one wants to upgrade before they're at least at patch 5 to go find all the bugs. Um, okay, there, uh, you will find specifically for each of your ERPs, there will be notes that are listed for each of them, so you will be able to go and find out, uh, so it will go and list um, uh, it will go list what the ver what version integrates with what version, so you don't end up installing the wrong version for the wrong reason. Um, on just uh, and then just one quick note. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it did actually go pop up and ask me for user access control. I have user access control enabled on this machine. For the love of all that is support based uh, that I have had to deal with, please, if you're installing this. Right click, run as admin. If it is not right click, run as admin, I inevitably go find that there are problems. And uh, I don't, uh, to be very honest guys, I don't care if you are the administrator of your machine. Um, Windows has got this wonderful, funny way of going and, uh, of going and actually, uh, even you might be admin of, of your machine. I am admin of this machine. And full access rights, everything. All right, still, right click, run as admin. If you don't, well, then uh, that's probably one of the first. If you call with a problem and it's not integrating, that's one of the first things I'm going to tell you is right-click, run as admin. By the way, the installation for this as well, there is the installation guide also on the CKP. And at the rate that I'm going, I'm actually going to go show you the CK. I'm going to show you uh, the web address of the CKP before the session's over. Welcome to the install shield for iVend. Yay. The EULA. And I expect all of you to completely, utterly read it from beginning to end. Because if you have a look, there is actually a small joke on line 3000. Not really. No, no, no. Who actually, uh, I don't, uh, it's not something that I actually really, uh, really expect anybody to have gone read besides from the lawyers. Because they can. So, next up, username, organization. Just because these have got no effect later in the system. So, quite frankly, you can put whatever you want over there. The destination folder, guys, this is something that is very important. Um, for those of you who go and end up trying, to, it used to be a thing where the people would go and have a tiny, 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 insignificant infinitesimal little C drive with like 10 gigs of space on it and they'd load all their files onto the D drive and programs and operating systems. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, please don't do that, <laughs> or otherwise if you can find a server like that, just tell them to format it and just change it because it doesn't work, or well, one, because nobody's ever really needed to do that for ages now, and the a network admin must be particularly old school to go that way, um, but two, if you are go, you need to preferably install to C drive, um, there's, when iVent's installing, there's a lot of files that unfold, and if you've got a really small C drive, Windows tends to just hog everything these days. I mean, I think just looking at the size of Windows, you need like 10 or 15 gigs anyway. So more space on C drive if you can. I'd recommend just leave it going to the normal folder. That way you know where it is. All right. Willem uh, Brewer, who says, am I still on the deployment landscape page? No. Uh, no, I'm not. I have now moved on to the actual installation page with installation components. Uh, can everybody go and, uh, guys, if you can just let me know in the questions, uh, what, what page can you see over there? Guys, okay, all right, so I'm seeing, okay, so Lisa's seeing the destination folder, installation components, yeah, okay. Now change to installation, okay, thank you. All right, okay, all right, okay, thanks guys. Yeah, busy installing. Yes, thanks, Peter. Okay, all right. So most guys can go see are oh, still on the same page. I am good. All right. So once you've selected your folder, next. Okay. Um, to be very honest here, guys, this is uh, okay. This is uh, this is the moment where I go and I see a lot of people going wrong. Is they go and the options over here: is single machine installation or choose installation option. Um, a single machine installation is if you're going to go and set up a demo system. Okay, so use that if you're just going to do demo. Otherwise, don't. Uh, otherwise, uh, avoid it like the plague. This single machine installation will guide you through the demo setup. 
Um, I'm not going to do that now uh, because I want to go through and get into the, uh, you can see the page behind me. Um, I want to go in and get into the actual nitty gritty of how everything gets set up. So I'm going to choose an installation option. And because I am a bit old school about it, I do not choose server installation. I do not choose client installation. I choose custom installation because uh, I find these two go and ignore, well, I like to know exactly what I'm going in and installing. Um, I find the other two go and just limit your options a bit. So we go to custom installation and you will see that this screen over here looks remarkably similar to the one behind it. In fact, it's so similar, I'm actually just going to move it over and you should be able to go and compare them side by side. So now we've got them in a nice big view over here as well as the view down over here. We'll actually be selecting it. So you'll be able to go follow through even if your resolution is terrible. Now, the first option over here is enterprise server. The enterprise server being the core central hub of what we are installing. Okay, so if you're installing at, if you're installing uh, over here at the enterprise, you will need to go and install the enterprise server first. If you're installing at the store, you will select to go and install the, the store. Right, in this particular case, because of the way I'm installing things, I am going to go and select this, and also gives you a nice little blurb of what it installs, what, where it installs, and all the rest of it. Next one up, uh, SAP Business One Integration Service. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm going in standalone mode, which means I'm not connected to any ERP system. At least not on this machine. I've got VMs and other things that connect through to them, but that is something that you will need to look through. There are additional setups that need to go through for each of your different ERP types. Um, and I do want to go run sessions on exactly the setups and the rest of those. And I'm hoping that maybe the week after next, we will go and have a look at that. But that's something else that we want to go and do and get set up. Store server. If I select enterprise server, I cannot select store server. It's that simple. It's one or the other. Um, the reason for this is that your store server has got a different set of components it installs as opposed to your enterprise server. Now, the next question I go on here is, but Keith, what happens if I have an enterprise server at the store? You know, it's just a big store. It's a ginormous store. It's got thousands of lanes, and, but they only got one store. That's fine. You install the enterprise server, and then in iVend itself, you configure it to be what we would call mixed mode, which is something that I'm going to go show you a little bit later in the session, where it will allow the two to go and link through, uh, to go run as one. Right there. In fact, that is the basic setup for the store server itself. Um, uh, that's the basic set, uh, setup for the enterprise and for our demo stack. Okay, so I'm unticking store server. Ivend API, web report viewer, Ivend sync API. Guys, I usually always install this one. Um, doesn't matter what I'm installing on, I just normally leave it ticked because it's, it's just easier. Um, if you have the APIs installed, it's they they don't it's not they won't kill the machine. They, it's not like it's you're going to open up the task manager and find this thing's gone and eaten all the memory and is running at 99% of CPU and it's just destroying stuff. No, it's a simple setup that it installs for IIS that goes in there. This over here, I would recommend you go and you install and you just leave it and you just leave it running. That way, when you need it, it's there. Um, because the one thing that I am going to point out is that you can only you only get this option to go do this on install. You do not get these options to go and modify your installation or to uh, or anything like that. You need to do a complete uninstall, reinstall. So yeah, rather rather take more things than less. So Ivan API report viewer, uh, Ivan Sync API ticket. Customer portal. Um, this customer portal over here is one of our components. I didn't go through it on the previous page because it falls more to the loyalty side and we just kind of ran out of time. It is a licensed component. Um, this is kind of like, uh, you see it online, you know, you can dial into these places, register as a customer with us, they'll say on the e-commerce page. Or on some of these pages, you dial in, you go and you get the, or uh, places like the medical aids really love this. It's very, it's similar, but much, much simpler on our side. Um, 
you can go dial in, you can see your transactions, you can see your purchases, uh, all the rest of it, how many points, you can update your information. Uh, a lot of places really love this these days because you actually get the person registering to go update the information. So instead of getting some poor little clerk trying to go and uh, diagnose the spelling of Zinfandel, uh, you can actually get somebody to, to type it in who knows the exact spelling. Um, next up, services. This one over here, I'm going to untick. And you, this one, you'll see if I went forward without, with having that ticked, it would actually tell me I couldn't do it. Just because I untick services over here does not mean that no services will be installed. In fact, services, uh, whatever you select your services will be installed. This over here, the entire idea of this is if you're using what's called a pass-through server. So this could be a, a remote desktop server, for instance. Could be, uh, it's a server you have on the, uh, you have on the, uh, on the internet that, uh, because for instance, you wouldn't necessarily want to have your, in fact, you shouldn't have your SQL server on the internet. Uh, directly connected, you should actually have it on the, uh, you should actually have it firmly behind your firewall and linked uh, linked further back. It should not be exposed directly to the to the net. You should actually go, uh, you can have something like a remote desktop server exposed to the net. It makes it much easier to manage. Um, with the with this, however, you can actually just install the services for iVend on the remote desktop server. That's all it installs. It doesn't install anything else. And in fact, if you tick this, you can't select anything else. Um, that means that that remote desktop server becomes a pass-through server to go and communicate between the outside world and your SQL server. Just a little extra layer of security you could throw in there. Next up, client options. So this is what you want to install. I always, like I said, I always install Management Console. I always install Point of Sale. Um, I've had a case recently where uh, one of my one of my partners. I don't know if they, I uh, didn't see them on the call today, but uh, if they are there, you know who you are. Uh, went and they only installed the POS at the, uh, they only installed the POS on the uh, device. They didn't install the, uh, the management console. That meant that all of a sudden, when we had to go make a change, a, a very minor change I might add, to the, uh, uh, to the point of sale, um, we all of a sudden had to open up like, two different team viewer sessions, one pointing to the pods, one pointing to the, uh, to the management console, uh, console on the store server, then we had to go check that they're communicating, then we had to check they're online, then, 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 then. It just adds in another layer of communication difficulties. Just install these two together. You can, you can adjust exactly who accesses what through licensing. It's far easier that way. Next. Okay, so I've now selected those ones. Uh, it will now give you a warning. Please be, uh, be aware the installer will now check the system configuration uh, and may install some additional files. What it's saying over here is it's basically going to start looking for things like SQL and as well as IIS, as well as also .NET and a couple of other things. Um, may look frozen, but please be patient. Wait for the next command. We click OK. And then we go and we wait. Uh, there will be a, there we go, a couple of command prompt screens that, that open up. Um, these are going to go through, start looking for bits and pieces. I do not recommend that this is necessarily a good time to go and start typing your email out to anyone or to open up or initialize a Skype chat or whatever else you might have because remember guys, these are command, uh, these are command line prompts um, and you don't accidentally want to start going and end up uh, typing in here. Um, I haven't yet had a problem where that's actually caused it. Nine times out of ten it just ignores it, but please, once again, rather just let the thing run by itself. If you really have to, you can go on and start installing the next the next machine. Um, and particularly when you're when you're going installing for a store, rather go and get all your machine, rather get as many machines up and running, start the installation on one, and then just let it run, they continue to the next one, and on and on and on and on. That way, they can all run in parallel as opposed to you going and running it uh, in series. So, uh, yeah, I am sorry. At this particular moment, we are going to go and have a little bit of the of staring at the green bar of doom as it crawls across my screen. But uh, hopefully, that should happen relatively quickly. Yeah, and we don't need to worry about that. 
at the moment, this will be a good time for some questions. Aha! And Joash, you have asked an excellent question over there. Will the installation run on Windows XP? Yes. Will we support the installation that you ran on Windows XP? No. We don't support Windows XP, guys. Um, for very good reason. Microsoft has stopped supporting it. <laughs> so uh, the, the basic thing is that uh, if, uh, if Microsoft supports the OS, so I'd imagine Windows 7 is pretty much going to be around forever. Um, technically, we, do, uh, we, we will support it. Um, technically, we do support Windows Vista. Having said that, please don't install Vista. Please don't, <laughs> right? Really, if if you're installing Vista, you might be you must be particularly desperate. So um, don't do that. Uh, on the server side, if I remember correctly, we ins we support all the way back to Windows. Uh, in fact, now's a good time. I can actually go bring this up for you. Um, uh, this is actually an excellent time for me to go and bring up right uh, hardware and software specification guide. Okay, now the .NET framework, it's uh, 4.5, if I remember correctly. Um, that is one of the things, uh, this is a slightly older version but of the hardware and software guide, but it's still, uh, still relevant today for, minim uh, for minimum requirements. Once again, you can download this online, um, and you'll go and you'll see things that it gives you recommended specs for your enterprise server. And to be very honest, uh, your enterprise server is, uh, your enterprise server, yeah, I'll, Specs for for the enterprise server are generally much less than you will be running on your ERP server. So, yeah, you also see that we put in some sort of steps to go through. So, for instance, the Intel Xeon. Well, if you're more than 30 stores, where is your memory? Memory is really a way you can gain. Aha, uh -huh, yes, no, just to remind us that it's still installing. Um, uh, memory is really a big way to go get a lot of jump uh, in your processing speed today. Same thing with solid state drives. I know a couple of places where they just packed in solid state drives because that's just the quickest way to run stuff. Um, when, uh, display you'll see is 1024768. That's the minimum we support. Um, yeah, you, c you can go lower, but it's just it's it, it doesn't really go through. Here you go and you see our software requirements operating system, like I said, Windows Server, all the way back to 2003 R2. So really, guys, we understand it, is that, you know, out there in the world, you've got these places, you've got these people, they've, they've got, they bought the software ages ago, they don't want to upgrade for whatever reason, and you're now stuck with them and you need to carry on. You see we support all the way up to, there you go, uh, 2012. Uh, and probably further, this is slightly out of date, I need to update it. Um, uh, Windows 7, 8 and 10, uh, as well as Professional and Enterprise Edition, there we go, all the way up. Yeah, this is out of date because we do definitely do 2016, I know that as well, for SQL Database Server. Um, and here we go, this is the big one, guys. If you've got your thing, if you've got your screen open and you're listening, Screenshot that because that over there is Latin uh, SQL Latin one general CP one C I A S. That is your collation you need for your SQL Server. If you do not have that, it Ivent will not install. Ivent actually runs a check for it. Go make sure. Do you have that installed? If you don't, then there will be an issue. Okay, so that is for the uh, that's for the enterprise server for the store server. Once again, you can see all the way back to 2003, all the way up to Windows 10. Uh, it does technically support Vista. I do know that at the moment. But once again, we don't put it on here because we don't really want you to be running Vista. Save yourself. Um, all right, uh, uh, and hi Keith, please, which between enterprise server and source server can we choose? We work in a city with more than... Uh, okay, it depends, uh, Jean, you will be... Um, okay, over there, remember the, enter, the enterprise server is the central point, so it doesn't have to be at a store. Um, if you've got more, if you've got more than one store, then you go and you, you install the uh, the store server at it. That's pretty much that simple. If you've only got one store, then you just install the enterprise and configure it as a store server. It's pretty straightforward. Now let's have a look. Okay, this is still con okay, right? Yes, the little gre the little blue wheel of doom is spinning, so we're going to carry on with that. But meanwhile, let's carry on with the hardware and software requirements. 
uh, database servers. You see, once again, guys, we've got this. It's pretty straightforward what uh, what we want. We don't ask for a lot. Platform.NET Framework 4.0. The latest .NET Framework, if I remember correctly, is 4.5, which you should, which it should automatically install. It actually triggers it in the installation of this, is that it will go and download, well, it'll trigger it to go download and update. Um, that is one thing I do have to say is generally try and run your updates and to get things working. There are sometimes updates that do cause issues, um, but nine times out of 10, Right, you're better getting updates than to going and leaving it. Remember, guys, we are dealing with distributed networks. Security, uh, uh, network security is an issue. It's not like you can just hide it behind a firewall anymore. Enabling features, 100%. Operation is complete. Woohoo! Moving on. Okay, and. Ivan Retail Management Console, once again, you see over here on the Management Console, we only require a, a Intel Core i3 or equivalent and, or, and 2 gig of RAM. The actual Management Console itself does not require a particularly hefty processor, and that's quite deliberate. We don't want it to be and to go and require a particularly hefty processor. This is because um, it will actually go and uh, because a lot of your pods out there well, I don't know any point of sale machine out there that runs a i7, for instance. Uh, right, most uh, obviously the entire idea with a point of sale device is that you want it to be as uh, you want it to be as cheap and replaceable as possible because with the best one in the world, cashiers do amazing things to them. Um, and that is something else that we also that we have enabled uh, that we have set over there. Um, the next one up is, uh, so you do actually only need an i3 in this one, uh, 2 gigs memory, once again very light for the management console, as well as only, uh, well we do say have at least enough data partition, as well as uh, 1024 by 768 colors and the rest of it. Uh, let's see, are we still, yep, it's still thinking hard over here, so we're going to continue on. Um, and once again you see the software, there you go, Microsoft Windows Vista, like I said, still supported. So, and ladies and gentlemen, right, we've moved on to the next step of installation. So, I will come back to the hardware and software guide in a minute because otherwise we're going to be staring at the green screen going across. I have a question before I jump into there. Uh, Ivan Poz's touchscreen. Yes, right there. Our base, uh, we are going to go more into that when we actually have a look at it, but yes, it is touchscreen. Um, you can use keyboard and mouse. The reason I'm using keyboard and mouse here is that you, if I use touchscreen, you guys can't actually see what's going on. I can see where I'm touching, but you guys, not really. Um, if you have more than, one store, more than one store, what is best practice? Install enterprise server, install server on two separate machines, or can you install two or more mach stores on the same machine? Uh, in Kiru, you can only have one store per machine. You can't go and have multiple stores on the same machine. It doesn't work like that. Uh, yeah, that's just the way it is. Unless we're moving into tenancy, which is another story. I, uh, now, back to our installation. Customer, uh, por uh, customer portal install mode. I'm going to go local install because it's just easier. Next. I, uh, in this particular case, because this is my personal machine, I already have an existing database, so I'm going to use that. Otherwise, you would go create new database. So, use existing database. Next, select your database server. That's my one. And... And I think it's underscore, was it? Dash. I think it's dash demo stack. Let me just check. We'll go and we'll see if I got, yep, there we go. And so enter in your SA password, uh, your ID database server, and that is dash demo stack because that's what I set up earlier. We go next. Now we're ready for the installation. Install and now we get to go. You see, installing Microsoft Framework uh, 4.0.2 update. So, if there are any frameworks, anything like that, normally it will go and tell you um, that it's installing it or it will try and install it. We do try and take that into account that you know a lot of the stuff out there, guys, is stuff that needs to be installed, um, needs to be set up, um, and you normally with a new pause you don't automatically have all of this on the actual device and when it's installed a lot of people don't run the updates which means that a lot of times things are going and running way behind where they should be 
Oh, there you go. Uh, all right, Visual C++. Um, so we do try and go and build in as much stuff into the installer without trying to make it a huge mammoth installer all by itself. Um, we do actually want it to go and run in such a way that uh, you're not going to get stuck. Um, but there will there are obviously prerequisites for what to install. And we have more questions. Okay, right there. If you uh, okay, right there, I've covered that. Whoa. Okay, right there we go. Um, all right, please, how do we get the login credentials? Uh, Agu, the, that would be your SQL login credentials that you would get normally from your, uh, that uh, you normally get when you install SQL. So whatever you use to install SQL, those will be your login cr credentials for over here. Okay, uh, let's have a look. What else do we have? Okay, so I think we've covered most questions. Yeah, now I do know that it's fascinating to watch a green screen, a green bar go across my screen, but um, yeah. Uh, and guys, if once again, questions, questions are encouraged. So uh, while we're going through that, I'm just gonna go back to the hardware and software guide um, because yeah, that's the management console that we've covered and it does recommend Adobe Flash, Flash Player, and you'll see why in a minute. Now we get down to the point of sale client, and guys, this is something that is, uh, yeah, you go and you see over there, uh, there are some things that we do need to go through on here that's very important. First up, uh, once again, you see uh, Intel Core i3, two gigs RAM, 10 gig uh, partition. So once again, not looking at particularly hard stuff. Um, Agu asks, is the SQL installed alongside Ivan installation, or must we have, uh, if it, you've got the option there, Agu, if if Ivan detects, if Ivan does not detect SQL, it will actually tell you, uh, we haven't detected SQL, do you want to install SQL 2008 R2 Express on your machine? And it will assume that it's a pretty small machine. Typically on your larger installations, you should already have SQL installed and configured because there are additional rights and things that will go with SQL. So, yeah, but that's something that you should ex that you should experience with your installations on uh, as you actually get into uh, your uh, into your setups, particularly with your ERPs. Um, please remember, guys, that when you're installing iVend, it's f the entire idea is first you install and set up your ERP. So set up your SQL database, set up your ERP. Once that's all done, then you install iVend. Okay, so Ivan's coming off. Uh, our idea is that Ivan's coming off to the fact here. Um, back to the hardware and software requirements over here. So display peripherals, I uh, got asked earlier, keyboard and mouse is uh, is need and not applicable in case of touch screen. So yeah, we are fully touch, compli uh, touch compliant, certified, whatever. That's the entire idea is that you will be operating this through a touch screen, not through a, um, well, not normally through a keyboard and mouse, but if you do want to do keyboard and mouse, we're not going to stop you. In fact, it's supported as well. The For you guys who are more used to going and doing, um, who are going and doing ERP, I'm going to introduce you to a new uh, concept, and that is OPOS. And this is also known as OLE for POS. Okay, it is a, a set of drivers that are installed with, uh, that are, they come with a number of printers. In fact, most printers out there, you will find them uh, with it. So, um, for instance, uh, it's a, a standard that was put together by Microsoft, Siemens, Nextdoor, Siemens, Nextdoor, IBM, uh, Epson, uh, um, Biloxon, uh, Bixelon, um, She's just about every point of sale manufacturer or point of sale hardware manufacturer uses OPOS for their actual integrations. The nice thing about it is it's not a Windows driver, so it's not subject to Windows updates. So you won't get an update that all of a sudden crashes all of your tills, uh, crashes all of your tills and stops you printing, for instance. It also controls things like the cache draw, right? OPOS compliant. And you see over here as well, we list the uh, different types of printers that we have tested. Um, that go through with us, uh, that we have, test, we have physically tested these. Some of these might be a little bit out of date, but the replacements will work the same. Once you've tested it, if it's OPOS compliant, it should work. As always, 
please test. If in doubt, test. And please, and if you are testing, please have the actual device with you. Uh, once again, one of my other partners, uh, they went and they managed to ship a device off to Zambia without going and testing anything with the Opos drivers, which meant that you then get stuck at the end of a very long broken telephone trying to go and, and diagnose why uh, your Opos drivers aren't working. Because, and uh, Opos is not something that shows up on TeamViewer. You actually need to have somebody standing there by the point of sale while you do stuff and ask, and then you have to ask, did it work? And they have to go say yes or no. So, all right, that is, okay, ignore that, uh, but here we go. Okay, all right, it's apparently I went and I typed in the wrong name for demo stack over there. Okay, all right, that's fine. And now it's writing back the action. Okay, but that's fine over there. So basically, I went and I typed in the wrong name for demo stack. All right, but I will need to go run that again and get that up and running for tomorrow because we are all, we are running out of time over here. Okay, but uh, that is something else that we can, that we can have a look at. Let me just go check that uh, things are up and running here on this side, and I will quickly go run through and make sure that things are are going. All right, so, okay, if there are no other questions, then I'm going to go and uh, once, uh, once again, if there are no other questions, uh, then while we're just waiting for this to come, th for this to come through, uh, I will go and sort that out in a minute. Uh, not for now. Okay. All right. Well, then the final thing I want to go, th I want to go through while I am. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, no, I did actually type in the wrong name for the, uh, uh, for demo stack. Um, what I'm instead going to go through and while we can get this going is I just want to go across to the city access knowledge portal. All right. Uh, yeah, no, we'll get to that a bit later. Let's just go and have a quick look across at this just in the last couple of minutes. Um, this over here is the City Access Knowledge Portal. Is everyone registered on this? You should be registered on this. Okay, right, show of hands. Yes, that's the show of hands who's registered on this. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, all right, thanks. Stop showing hands, stop showing hands. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put all the hands down now. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, right there, so you are all there, which is good news. The City Access Knowledge Portal itself is uh, where you will get all of your latest uh, IVIN setup and information, uh, IVIN setup information that you need. Um, you can then go and also set up everything exactly that you, uh, you can then also go and see, uh, once again, the forums, the e-learning. Uh, let me just go through this in a second. Okay. Oh, and we've got a, we have questions. Yeah, well, yes. Okay, cool. All right. So the actual city access knowledge portal over here. First off, knowledge base. Guys, this is where we do a lot of knowledge articles. So for instance, uh, things like feature comparison is something else, something I got put up. Supported payment gateways, uh, notes on I've, uh, on Ivan Retail uh, 6.5 Update 5, that is also something that does appear over here. What's new in the CKP, and it will give you things, it will tell you, for instance, the what's the remote support platform, customer play, face and display. This is just for the Ivan Retail 6.5 Update 5 update. And uh, your transaction register, all the rest of these things, we list each of these over here, and you'll find that actually it goes and it lists all of these going through. You can browse by topics best practices, how to certify, code customization, collaterals. There's a lot of bits and pieces over here you can look at. Uh, yes, Alex, uh, just type the question, please. Okay. Next up, e-learning. Okay, guys, if you have enjoyed hearing the my dulcet tones going and lulling you off to sleep, as I'm sure you guys have all been fascinated by what I'm showing you, uh, you can come over here and listen to more of me going and talking about the iVent setups over here and retail videos. These are all available. Um, these are all available over here. Yes, lol, exactly. 
Um, uh, <laughs> You can you can listen to me as well as you can also listen to one of my friends over there is uh, David Patterson um, or David Webb. Uh, he went and he also did a lot of these and Tenny Koshi. Uh, we've got a lot of videos over here. You can view them. You can so and the nice thing about these is that it actually goes and it uh, walks you through exactly what to do. Um, uh, Alex, uh, yeah, I will deal with that. A bit later for licenses and that we can deal that off with that after this um, okay uh, so e-learning you can come through and see exactly what's going on over there forums like I went and I said is over there and I don't do we have Eddie on here today I don't think we've got Eddie uh, because Eddie's uh, Eddie Wilcox over at WLM uh, WLM SCS you'll see he's over here quite a bit as well as uh, is he on here uh, no, Daniel, uh, Daniel from uh, Touch Retail Africa. He's also on here quite a bit. There you can go see Eddie. He's got a lot of. Uh, he goes and he lists a lot of things on here. So, all right, they are. Pe believe it or not, the forums are actually used, guys. So please, do, please feel free to use them. Next up is the document store, which we will go and open up in a second. Right, and guys, this is the spot to come for all of your Ivan documentation, particularly down here, product documentation. Uh, there are brochures for the salespeople as well as implementation method, as well as uh, your pr product presentations. Those are there. Um, ah, Simran. Okay, all right. Yep. Um, Okay, all right, we'll deal with that. Uh, okay, well, Simran, if you get hold of me afterwards, we'll go and we'll deal with that later. Uh, so once I, uh, once again, over here, product documentation, and if we go and we drill down into the Ivan, Ret uh, Ivan Retail one, for instance, there's even an Ivan troubleshooting guide, uh, edition one, which we've put together from all of the things that we get uh, asked. Uh, and over here, it will actually go drill down to your actual... Um, uh, to the actual manuals, there's things like your nav installation manual, control center manuals, uh, installation manuals, hardware and software guide, which I need to go download. Yes, I know. Uh, one very important one to look at is the Ivan Retail Update 5 Easy Start Guide. Now, the Easy Start Guide is something very important. This will allow you to go set up a working Ivan from nothing in an hour and a half. So basically, yes. I'll repeat that. You can start with a blank computer, and granted the installation is probably going to take about 30 minutes or that hour and a half, but you can use this guide to go and actually install and configure iVend so it actually works. Right. Uh, personally, I've gone a bit quicker. I've actually done it in about 45 minutes, but then again, yeah, I've probably got more experience with Ivan than a lot of you guys so um, you can if you really want uh, you can go and uh, open up a forum chat and tell me how quick you can get it done using the easy start guide um, and then just let me know and we can go and maybe have a ranking system at the end of, at the end of the day I'll be very interested to see next one up over here is downloads guys this is where you go and download all the bits and pieces that you need for Ivan including Ivan demo stack. Ooh, ah, so shiny. Over here is where you actually download Ivan Retail. So you can download the actual Ivan Retail itself. There's the SAP, uh, SAP Business One connectors and the Microsoft Dynamics connector. The other ERP connectors are coming. Um, that is something that we're working out with Sage at the moment to go see exactly how we're meant to display it and all the rest of it. They are available. Get in touch with me if you need them. I will direct you to the right people who will go and send them across to you and la 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 la. If in doubt, get in touch with me, guys. I will try and... Uh, the only thing don't ask me is pricing because, um, yeah, I, I will tell you, for, I'll, I'll be perfectly uh, upfront with you about now about pricing is I don't know. Um, I'm not the guy who does it. Uh, I'm not the guy who can give you a discount. I'm not the guy who you should be arguing with it. Um, I can tell you which bits are licensed, but I can't tell you what the. Pr uh, but I'm not going to tell you the prices because inevitably anything I tell you will be wrong. So on that note, yeah. Um, okay, so over here, this is for all of your download needs. Come over here to Ivan Retail. 
Next up, the community page. Ooh, ah. Well, over here you can go see all of the community announcements and entries and things like that. Uh, posts on, uh, <laughs> there we go, we've got people going and posting, to, uh, uh, posting on there with different suggestions. Um, you can go see what's going on over here. You can scroll across, you can see where we are. I am this little one over here. Right, yes, that's, that's me. Yes, the massive, massive office controlling the Southern Hemisphere, well, Southern Africa. Oh, most of Africa. Yes, that's me down there in Cape Town. Yeah. Uh, after that, certification. Guys, pay attention now, all of you who are sleeping. I actually have an audience view test bar over here. It actually goes and it tells me how many of you guys are, are paying attention. And I get a report on it at the end of the day. It's really interesting to see who actually listened and who didn't. Um, so over here, uh, this is where you actually write your certification. If you are feeling particularly brave, you can come along and go write it before next week, Friday, or board, or just whatever. Uh, yes, I will grade it. I will go tell you how it is, and I will tell you whether you passed or failed. I will also then probably tell you to go finish watching the rest of the uh, the rest of these. Um, so, but that is done through here. The certification is an open book exam. I'm going to say it again so that everyone listens. It's an open book exam. We expect you to go and have uh, Google open, to have the Knowledge Portal open, to go and have iVend open, to have iVend Help open, to have the downloaded documents open. And because of that, we've made the questions correspondingly hard. So, open book exam, hard questions. Support, uh, this will take you through to the support portal. When you signed up with us, they should have sent you the support links and all the rest of it, that will go and help you to do, go and log support calls with us. Uh, next thing as well, and I have, I know I've skipped one over here, which is, uh, which is partner kit, which I'm going to in a minute. Which exam will we be doing? We will be doing the implementation exam. So uh, that is a very, very good question. Let me go back to certification right there, which is the, you, you can do your sales certification if you want. We're going to be doing the Ivan Retail Implementation Phase 1 certification that one okay once you've done that one after a couple of installations and you're feeling more on your feet you can then come across and do this one it's muted uh, okay all right I think we lost uh, lost a little connection over there for a minute so all right uh, next up uh, uh, what are we going loading up over here Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, there we go. So just across, uh, yes, I switched across to extensibility. Um, all right. And on ex the extensibility side, that is where we go and set, uh, that over there is where we can go and set and see where all the extensibility uh, things are coming through. I've had extensibility is not something I've covered particularly heavily today. Um, it does allow you to go and develop add-ons for iVend. So, and we actually go and we run you through uh, what you've got. There's products, there's guides, and there's presentations, and there's sample product, uh, sample projects. So if you, if any of you are inclined to going and making more code-based add-ons, we have these all over here. It's done in VB, uh, uh, vb.net, so you can go do that. Once you've got that in and set up, you can go and have, uh, have a look. There's things like error exception handling, integration to fiscal printers, which I know is something that you guys will need to look at, particularly if you're dealing further in Africa. Zimbabwe, for instance, does have a fiscal printer that you need to integrate to. We have got the integration for that written. Uh, Tanzania's got a fiscal printer. Kenya's got a fiscal printer. Rwanda's got fiscal printers. So much fun. Yes, there are a lot of them out there. That's why we give the, these projects to you guys. You guys can go and integrate and customize and set them up and then the whole and then you guys can deal with it. Makes it much easier, uh, particularly because it's, uh, for instance, the Zimbabwe fiscal printer, no one else on the planet uses the same printer. Yeah, I know, it's, it's madness, but yeah, that's the, that's the story over there. It's their fiscal printer, their own special, special little thing. Personally, I blame Bob, but hey, you know he's out of power now, so you can't. So I, I've got to find somebody else up there to blame. Um, 
All right, but there's things like read, read UDF uh, values uh, during transactions. There's There are a lot of things over here, guys. I think you can see by just how long it's... There you go, payment processor sample. So you want to integrate to different payment processes. These are all over here. There are lots of projects. Uh, if you are not a developer, tell your developers to come and have a look over here. There's lots of stuff they can do. There's knowledge articles. There's e-learning videos. Yeah, there you go. Lots of knowledge articles. Lots of e-learning videos as well. Uh, as well as the webinars. So that's all over here for add-ons. Then if you're developing anything with the APIs or if you're doing any report designing, which is more likely what you are going to be doing, or dashboard designing or pause receipt customization, all of these are available over here. There's also additional uh, extensibility for uh, MS, uh, for NAV or Business One. You can have a look over here and pull those out of there. Finally, I'm going to go across to PartnerKit. Now, our partner kit over here is uh, where we go, and this is the main point of where, okay, before I get too much into partner kit, here's a question. Right there, we are on the IVN extensibility page. Yes, Peter, yeah, that's that's where we were. We're about to switch across to IVN partner resource kit. Oh. Okay, all right, that should, uh, that should be over there. Okay. Uh, and in the meantime, I have actually just got the install up and running again, so that should be go that should be finishing in a minute. Okay. Uh, here we go. Partner resource kit. We've got your videos, so consultants' content, best practices for Ivan upgrade. Uh, I would re uh, if you're going to upgrade Ivan, the first thing I would recommend is go uh, for your first time around. Call me. I will try and guide you through it as best as possible for the first time. If you call me after that, I'll probably get I'll probably start getting angry and referring you back to the knowledge portal. Um, but the first time around, I don't mind. Um, recommended videos for uh, for consultants, for loyalty, for implementation consultants. Get certified, so you've got the links. This is basic. The partner kit page is meant to be a page where you can go put everything together, so you can go see exactly what is. Um, so you can go and you've got one page, one stop shop you can go get everything in and set up and ready. Uh, all right, and that's just that's continuing on. Um, you also have the consulting uh, the consulting effort estimator tool. Okay, this is I'm not going to download this because it is actually a uh, an Excel spreadsheet. You can download it in your own time. It does actually give you an idea about how much something is going to uh, how long something's going to take to implement Ivend. I know for you guys who are new at implementing iVent, it's probably a very good idea to go and download it and go and ask me. I will help you wa uh, walk through it just to go see how long things are. And if you've got any questions, that's fine as well. Let me know. I will go and help you uh, just determine how long it will take to install something. And there's things for salespeople like code branding guidelines and yeah, uh, creating sales quotes and orders and creating sales proposals. Are there sample questions for the exam? Yes. Am I going to give them to you? Well, that's the entire reason that you're going to have to go to stay tuned, sports fans, because I will probably, I, I have actually written some of the questions for the exams. I will be going and dropping, I will be going and pointing them out to you over the week as we go through here. I'm not just going to go give you a huge big pile and go say, hey, here's all the, here's all the questions. There is a bank of about, uh, there's a bank of about 400 of them um, that we update regularly. Uh, we do try and catch all the ones that uh, there are some that have snuck through that I, I will go and review with you at the when we do the exam. And with that, it will then go. Uh, I will then be able to go and mark you up or mark you down or give you part marks because of if you did pass or fail. And with that, you may be able to pass or fail. I have had quite a few guys who have failed by failed by one percent. Who I've gone through and said, "Well, I can give you part box on this question or this answer, and we can go see exactly what the story that we can because I can see what where you're going with it." So, with that, that is something that uh, that's part of the reason to go and actually have a look, uh, to go and pay attention, and to go and uh, to go and listen to me for the rest of the week, even though I might be putting you to sleep. I pray I'm not putting you to sleep. Don't go to sleep. Stay awake, please. Otherwise, okay, right there. And right, once again, this has now gone and failed. All right, on that note, guys, uh, it's now 
uh, 20 to, uh, well, it's now 20 to 12 on my side, which is the end of the session. Uh, it looks like I need to go and sort out exactly what the story is with my uh, uh, with my iVend, but we can go get a bit. I will have that up and ready and running for tomorrow. At least we've gone through the City Access Knowledge Portal. We will catch up again. Uh, uh, same time, well, what do they say? Same bad time, same bad channel. Yay. All right. Unless there's any other questions, please let me know what's going on, and uh, I will try and answer them tomorrow. Cool. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for paying attention, and chat to you soon. Keep well. Bye.